All right, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One. Now I have the contr. <sighs> yeah, I'm good. Okay, I have the controversial opinion on this film. Um, I think this is probably the worst film of Phase Two, uh, at least for me personally. Like I can watch Thor: The Dark World, but as much as I can find to enjoy in this film, this just does so many very particular things that just pisses me right the hell off. Um. I mentioned in the last one that we have the fake-out death thing, and God, Groot is awesome in this movie, and baby Groot is adorable, I'll give you that all day, but damn, it's just manipulative as fuck to kill a character just to, just to get you to feel that, that pang of, of sympathy for him, and then, like, not ten minutes pass, and Groot is back, or whatever, and it's just like, really? You really have to manipulate like it just feels manipulative and and it, it doesn't feel like they earned it at that point at that point you just feel kind of cheated um so that is really pissed me off then there's like there's just a lot about the the formulaic marvel movie that's that's really here with guardians and so guardians is is interesting because it's a very safe movie in that it follows all of the the uh tricks and trappings of what we've as an audience come to expect at a, by, from a Marvel movie by this point. But it's a risk in that this is a really, really ambitious thing to do with a Marvel movie that's not anything like any of the other ones. You know, it's not really a superhero movie in a lot of ways. Um, so it's just, it's a very, very weird mixed bag, and I, I have a hard time um, with it because of that. I, I get kind of annoyed with all the you know, the, the cliches that the Marvel thing depends on. Faking out deaths, uh, artifact plot, a lot of comedy in this. And like, don't get me wrong, no, no comedy in any movie. I'm not gonna be that guy. But the thing about when you have a movie that is so driven by the humor is humor wears off really quickly. Um, it's really easy to do something funny. You know, you can do something that's just random and silly and funny, and you might get a laugh. Like, you might get a snort out of that or something. I don't know. Just thought of something off the top of my head. You know, I can slap someone with a fish, but how often are you going to find that amusing, you know? Um, it There's this, this thing about staying power with the film, and so... I, I laughed at this movie when I saw it in the theaters, and, and uh, the last time I saw it, I was watching it with my mom, and she'd never seen it, and, and I laughed with her. Watching it on my own here, there are a couple scenes I laughed at. There are a couple scenes that I, I still do think are really funny. Not nearly to the same degree that I did with the old with the first two times I watched it. Uh, the, the humor just, it doesn't stay. So... While this is probably overall a better movie for me than Thor The Dark World, ultimately this one just grinds on my nerves because it is so symptomatic of the Marvel method at this point. Um, Marvel film method, I should say. So that being said, why is that a problem? If, if it's working, why does, why does it bother you that it's working? And, in, and the matter it, it comes down to for me is... It might work if it were an isolated thing, if this was not connected to Marvel at all. But the fact that it is means I am noticing these things so much more and more and more in every movie. And this is, again, something that Phase 3 starts to improve on. So it's interesting to talk about these since we're almost at the end of Phase 3 right now. Now, I will say, as much as I dislike Guardians, uh, as, as, like, you know, I, it's, this, it's that weird movie where... I have fun watching it to a degree, but I get annoyed with it. Uh, and then there's other things about it, just for me particularly. Like, I, I don't like blue people. I don't like pink people. If you're going to do an alien, do an actual alien kind of thing. Um, but that's part of the style that, that James Gunn is going for, is, is kind of a tribute to those old sci-fi films. So, part of the thing for me, though, with, um, with Guardians is even though I can, on some level, enjoy it, I can sit back and, and look at it as, you know, a fine, okay, popcorn flick kind of thing, I just, I get annoyed with it, the, the fact that it's connected to the whole Marvel Universe. If you're going to do a universe, 
then you shouldn't just be making the same movie over and over again. That's the feeling I kind of get. And so while I respect a lot of the, the risks taken here, I think Groot and Rocket are really, really weird risks for characters. Um, and it pays off wonderfully. I'll also say the soundtrack's really good here. Ronan is god-awful, completely forgettable. One of the, um, you know, one of the worst Marvel villains, if not the worst. Like, Christopher Eccleston has wasted his Malekith, but Malekith is legit a threat, and Loki overshadows him in his own movie, but not as a more interesting villain that is on screen for 10 seconds. At least Loki has a significant amount of screen time. Thanos is on screen in Guardians for 10 seconds, and he's 10 times more interesting than Ronan. Um, so this this ends up working to different degrees. Um, oh, post-credits with the Collector and Howard the Duck. I, I will say, I, I do admire the boldness of this film. It is, it is a statement. It is a bold move to do something like put Howard the fucking duck in your goddamn post credit scene. And so there is a lot to respect about this. There is a lot to, to admire about this film, um, even though I do have a lot, uh, a lot of criticisms against it. But that's my review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Um, the next one is Avengers Age of Ultron, but sitting here looking at this one, I'm kind of kind of reconsidering the order because the the movies came in the box set in a particular order and i think this would play better watching this before winter soldier um as opposed to the order i have watched it in just because you get the tease for guardians at the end of thor uh dark world and you get a tease for age of ultron at the end of winter soldier so it just seemed to flow a little bit better but whatever uh, we're going on to Age of Ultron next, though, so see you there.